Hello, everybody. This is Bala here, coming in on Monday instead of the weekend. Um, had to do a weekend travel to here to San Diego. I'm here in my office and uh, was having lunch, and I thought I'll pick up 20 minutes and just uh, get the weekend message through. Um, just as delayed, but hopefully not denied at least, isn't it? Hope you guys can hear me well. Um, just wanted to, as always, start off by recognizing where we are in the journey right now. Um, we are starting the third MISO first week, which is, I mean, I thought we just started the season and we are already here. So it's just, uh, you know, it is the, the, that's the beauty about having any stru anything structured in life. Uh, so a structured training program, we have a very clear milestones, short-term milestones, um, and these short-term milestones can be easily um, attained or it gives us a certain focus for the short-term mi milestone. And as a result, before we realize the short-term milestones keeps adding up and your training keeps adding up, and before you realize, you guys are ready for uh, the uh, the race day. That's really how we have seen this, guys, for the last 10 seasons or so. And this season is no different. It's already August. Can't believe. I actually thought that we started the year with season nine. And here we are in the middle of season 10 already. So there's a lot I can talk about MISO 3. Um, but um, for today, before I delve into MISO 3, which we'll discuss next week, I wanted to talk about a couple of concepts that as we move through the training journey, I wanted all of you to think about. If you think if you, uh, if you have been following my uh, weekend messages thus far, you would realize that I've been sort of throwing light into what we are doing, why we are doing from different angles, aerobic, anaerobic, that's one way of looking at it. Then we talked about how the cardiovascular system itself, you know, builds from inside out. Uh, we talked about that. Um, and then we talked about a different angle, uh, wherein, uh, you know, when you, when you do the engine, like the engine parallels, small, high speed engine versus large, slow speed engine, which is, you can do it for a much longer time, which is what we are talking about. So different angles have kind of, uh, shown some light and how, uh, a conversational pace really ties in everything. Running slow now to run faster with that balloon analogy, for instance. So a lot of things I talked about. So in that same vein, I wanted to now provide yet another framework to understand what is it that we are doing right now. Why all of these are important is that everything is working parallelly. So it's good for us to sort of step back, think, understand, so that you can do the training better. Okay. So what I wanted to say here for today is that when you look at your training journey, at the end of the day, we are shooting for some positive impact of your training. That positive impact would be increasing your cardiovascular strength, increasing your muscular strength, increasing your uh, mental, mental strength, whatever it may be. We want that training effect to be in place so that there is a positive training effect. And because of the positive training effect, you are able to run faster or longer or a long, uh, lot more time all of that comes together. That's really what our training's objective is at the end of the day, isn't it? So um, so on the positive side, if you think of it as uh, you know, a left hand and right hand, a scale on both sides, the right hand is the positive effect of training, which I let me call it the training effect. So there is a delta training effect every time you finish a MISO or every week you finish. But like with anything in life, you have to give something to get something, isn't it? Not, there is no free lunch, really. And here, the cost of this training effect is the injury that your body is sustaining. Now, when I say injury, you can think of injury in multiple ways. The, the highest level of injury is what we really care about, where it is debilitating, where the, or the pain is uh, evident, that you are like, you know, saying, oh my God, it is paining. That is when you think about injury. But there are lower levels of injury that is happening, which is supposed to happen in the body for you to get the training effect, which is, you know, when you go for a, a, a long run, you must, there, there are at a microfiber level in your muscles, there, there are, it, it fractures. There is a tear in those microfibers and it is part of the training program. So this tear gets mended and imagine you have 100 muscle fibers at a micro level and you go for a long run and 20 of those 100 is torn because of the impact 
you know, the training run you're doing. So body is trying to think, oh my God, this 100 seems to be not enough. Let me fix these 20 and then actually make another five more so that next time when the similar load comes, these 20 will not break. That making of that five and mending of that 20 is really what the training effect is. Okay, so that's on the left side. So there is an injury that is happening, but that's almost like an injury that is needed for the training effect, almost like a cost, you know, for the return of training that we're delivering. So when you think about this as a revenue and cost equation, then revenue being the training effect, positive Im improvement in your training, uh, you know, ability, and the cost being this microfiber uh, tear and other injuries that your body is taking as a result of this impact loading. So as long as, as you know, in business, as long as the cost is less than the revenue, you know, things are okay. But if cost becomes more than the revenue, then the company is uh, not sustainable, isn't it? Similarly, in the training as parallels as well, as long as the delta, the positive delta, that means the increase of training impact is higher than the increase in injury that the body is taking, you know, you are still, there is a positive return on effort of your training. But the minute it becomes like this, wherein the increase in injury is much higher compared to the increase in training effort, then you are, you are in an unsustainable training zone and very soon will be shut down because of training. So this seems like a very easy framework, but there are profound implications on understanding this. The profound implication are essentially coming down to two things. One, if you do not provide sufficient rest for the body to take care of those so-called lower level injuries that I was telling you about, those muscle fiber tears and other injuries that we are talking about, if you don't give them adequate, don't give the body adequate time to sort of rectify it, then there is an accumulation of this injury that is happening in the body. So that delta is slowly increasing if you don't give them sufficient time. So as the time increases, as the delta increases, there will be a point where the equation, the Uber equation I was telling you about, that increase in delta of injury gets higher than the increase in delta of the training effort. And then it becomes a negative return of your training and it will get injured and you'll be shut down. So that's the first thing, which is give rest between runs, okay? When you do not give rest, if you don't take sleep, if you don't sleep properly, you don't drink water, have that protein shake. You know, if you are able to take the protein shake, you know, they say that within a, uh, an hour of running, if you take protein shake, it helps the body to quickly make those, you know, mend those stone muscle fibers. So that's a great thing. So you should do that. Um, so those are all the things that you think about. How do I ensure that the delta of... Uh, you know, uh, the delta of uh, injury that is going up is not very high. The second thing you need to think about is that the longer a run, more time you need for you to recover. So typically long runs are the weekend runs, right? So when you do these weekend runs, that's why I give the weekend runs on a Saturday. And then Sunday is supposed to be off day. And then you have Monday, you have other strength training. And then Tuesday is your first run. The reason for that two days of gap is for your body to sort of recover. So as you go into the third meso, those of you who are kind of moving around uh, the runs, try your best to finish your long runs on Saturday so that you get those two days of no running days for your body to take care of the delta of injury on the left side so that the equation is maintained well. This is the same reason why you cannot move a long run that you have missed into the next week. You know, it's not like a current account or something where, okay, I missed it this week, but next week I'll do two long runs and sort of balance the equation. Now, that doesn't work like that. When you do two long runs in a week, same thing happens, what I just told you. Injury happens. And as a result, you don't give time for the injury to be uh, rectified by the body. And then the rest is history, as they say. So that is my first sort of thought process for today, which is always think about the return, which is the training effort, which is like the revenue and the training impact to your body, which is positive that you need more of it. And the cost of it is the injury that your body undertakes because of this constant impact motion of running. And you managing these two 
will lead lend itself to long term sustainable training rhythm you know those of you who have done four five six seasons they would know what i'm talking about i've been in the constant training for almost 15 plus years now and i know this you know i know this inherently that i am not training for this run i'm training so that my series of runs for the next many years are okay the minute you get into that zone you think about every run differently okay so that's item 1 today item 2 today is i want to introduce to you the concept of fit f i t framework it's a beautiful framework simple and easy for you to kind of remember and has a result give more uh, more uh, should i say respect to the training schedule and the training framework f in fit stands for frequency i in fit stands for intensity and t in fit stands for time between runs frequency intensity and time between runs of the three pillars on which the training platform the training program is delivered frequency number of runs you can do a week intensity the number of intense runs you do like a stride runs a hill run a tempo run these are runs called higher end runs those of you who have never heard of this you guys are doing it for the first time up to about 500 miles of total we don't introduce any of these type of specialized we call it the strength runs into your program so those of you who have not heard about it don't worry you're starting for the first time so you don't have those runs but if you come back again and as you run more and more you'll be introduced to these type of runs where it is called the intensity runs where you are you are allowed to run or you're asked to run in an anaerobic zone the heart rate is not base base on the other end of the uh, the spectrum so that's intensity and then time between intervals is what we just talked about so the combination of these three how you manage frequency intensity and the time between intervals if they are in an ideal scenario then your training effect is perfect you will have the maximum return of your effort so frequency if you run every day think about it if you run every day you think you're you're going to get better you might think so but you're not as i just told you about the previous uh, equation if you run every day you're not allowing your body to recover i'm talking about regular amateurs of course if someone is running for 10 12 15 years he can run any every day he can do whatever he wants we're talking about you know like a first time runners and early stage runners like most of us like amateurs so yes so too much of frequency is bad too low frequency is also bad because body is not getting enough training effect likewise intensity intensity is in, is required uh, so that you, you are able to strengthen your you know cardiovascular muscle skeleton system by kind of pressure testing it in a controlled way but just doing too much of intensity will blow your heart out a little bit and you are you, you get more injured similarly not doing anything at all you will just be floating uh, in in your base base range only and you won't get the best impact for your training and training between uh, rest between training i've already told you uh, in the previous uh, work so this fit understanding the fit where it where the rubber hits the road for you guys is every run in your training schedule matters so if you give you if i if i give you four runs in a week and if you do only two what are you failing on think about it you're failing on intensity uh, sorry you're failing on frequency and you are giving too much of time uh, you know between runs so your training impact is going down as well if you do too much of time similarly if i ask you to do four runs of which two are strength runs like strides and uh, you know uh, hill runs and etc and you and, and there are many folks like they just think that okay i bala has told four miles i'll just go and run four miles without even reading the instructions or in other words you have missed out on that week's requirement of intense workout or in other words the intensity pillar is failed and thereby your training return is not optimal that's how the rubber hits the road on the intensity side of things and time between inter- uh, runs i've already talked about it a lot so bringing all of these three things together in a very tactical way if i have to just leave today's podcast i would say just follow the training schedule to the t it is done with a specific purpose in mind everything that we are giving you has a specific purpose in mind and if you literally follow the schedule without even thinking too much we are doing the thinking for you if you literally follow the schedule without thinking too much you will be an incredible runner in couple of seasons
and definitely achieve your this season's goal with with a minimum of resistance from anyone. Okay, that's my message for you today, folks. The equation between uh, a training intense, a training impact versus the impact on injury, how to balance that, and the fit framework, frequency, intensity, and time between runs. Hope all of this makes sense. And congratulations to all those folks who have given such wonderful, humble brag stories. Um, very inspiring to all. Really, really very nice to see that. And um, I also want to congratulate 5K runners. They are entering their final by end of this uh, month. They will be finishing their training, 10-week training program. There's a lot of first-time 5Kers. Can't wait for them to finish it. I'll come, to, I'll come back to you for folks in New Jersey to see if we can do an informal race day for you all. I'll talk to my coaches and we'll, we'll come back to you shortly. Um, also congratulate masters who have completed their first week and they're entering their second week of their training. Very exciting. So we are in full swing, folks. Everyone is in. The uh, We are into the third uh, MISO. Masters and uh, 5K runners, they're all in full swing in different stages of training program. And I saw, by the way, I also saw the T-shirt uh, sample that we all got. Oh, it looks beautiful. Pesta green in color. Material looks like just fantastic. So huge kudos to Mona for making this happen. I love the design. It, can, it, is, it is looking much better than the pictures. Um, so we are close to 300 orders. So I can't wait to get those T-shirts uh, into your hands and see those beautiful pictures with uh, a season 10. Uh, t-shirts uh, on everyone uh, thank you folks continue the good work keep going remember think for next day alone read the instructions plan first do this as priority as opposed to last day and continue to spread happiness and positivity with everyone that is connecting with you thank you everybody we'll see you soon take care